Welcome to Medicare School Daily, where we help you understand Medicare, save money, avoid mistakes, and above all else, get the most out of your Medicare benefits. Now, today's topic is Supplemental Plan G versus Supplemental Plan N. And the question is, which is better? And so as we look at that question, I want to do a quick review on how original Medicare works. So if you decide to stay in the original Medicare system of A and B, you are uh, going to have six different liabilities. We also call those gaps. And these liabilities mean this is what you're going to be responsible for financially. Medicare is going to pay and uh, pays uh, fairly well, but they're going to leave you with these liabilities that we call gaps in your coverage. So we actually have three gaps on the A and three gaps on the B of Medicare. So let's review the gaps or the liabilities that you have in original Medicare. So on the A side of Medicare, if you go to the hospital, notice days 1 to 60, you're responsible for a deductible. That's $1,408 this year. This deductible can be paid more than once in a year. If a person is hospitalized, then discharged, and 60 days goes by and they're not re-hospitalized, but they're re-hospitalized after 60 days of their discharge date, then that deductible would be payable again if they are hospitalized uh, that, that same year. And so that is not an annual deductible. It is, uh, it's called a benefit period deductible. So the point is that's your first liability when it comes to Medicare Part A. Now, if you happen to be in the hospital longer than 60 days, Days. And by the way, it's pretty rare, but the first 60 days, that's all you pay. But after that, Medicare says they will provide 90 more days of, of insurance for you, but you now have to pay uh, a daily copay. So month three, you pay a $352 a day copay. Month four and month five, you pay a $704 a day copay. And that means that's $10,500 that you owe for month three and uh, $21,000 for month four and $21,000 for month five. So these are called extended stays. They are very rare, but that's how they're billed when they occur. So that is your second gap, these extended hospital uh, daily copays. The final gap on the A of Medicare is for skilled nursing. Now, Medicare says if you are in the hospital a minimum of three days, so we're in the hospital a minimum of three days, then the doctor can put us in skilled nursing facility, and the first 20 days they will cover all the expenses as long as we've had the three-day stay. Now, if we're uh, in a hospital three days, we go to skilled nursing. First 20 days, Medicare pays everything. But after that, notice days 21 to 100, now we have daily co-pays of $176. So these are your liabilities. These are the things that you would have to pay out of pocket on the A of Medicare. Now let's talk about the B of Medicare. B is pretty much everything outpatient related. And so again, we have three gaps. Uh, if you're using the B services, this would be doctor uh, services, this would be outpatient surgery, durable medical equipment, those kinds of things. We have a deductible of 198. Now, it's not like this deductible here, where this can occur multiple times in the year. This only happens once a year, and it's a calendar year. So if you start Medicare July 1, uh, then this is your deductible through 1231. And then this deductible will reset every January. Sometimes when they reset it, it goes up a little bit. Sometimes it's the same from year to year. All right, but you're responsible for the deductible after that deductible is met. Now Medicare is gonna pay 80% of the bill and you're gonna pay 20%. So your uh, uh, percentage, your 20% is called coinsurance. Now the problem with your 20% folks is this, it is totally, totally unlimited, all right? In other words, that 20% never, ever, ever stops unless we get insurance to stop it. And then the last gap is called an excess charge. And this is when you see a physician that uh, will not take Medicare approved uh, reimbursement amounts as payment in full. They want more, they want extra. And when they add to the bill, that is called an excess charge. Now the most they can add is 15%, but when they do it, you're responsible for pay, uh, to pay for that. All right, and so these are six gaps in original Medicare. These are things that you're liable for. So the majority of people that will look at these gaps will say, I'm not comfortable with that uh, amount of liability. And so what they will do is they will take those liabilities, either uh, uh, some of them or all of them, they'll take the liability and then will transfer that to an insurance company and they will get a supplemental plan or a Medigap policy to fill in, in these particular gaps, all right? So let's talk about the plan G. When you have a G plan, the G plan will actually pay five of the six gaps that I just reviewed with you. They'll pay five of them. The G plan will pay the A deductible. It'll pay all your co-pays, plus will actually give you a whole nother year in the hospital uh, at no cost to you whatsoever. Okay, that's here. 
The G plan will also pay your $176 copay if you happen to be in the skilled nursing facility more than 20 days. So G will fill in all the gaps on the A. Now over on the B side, the G uh, will cover your coinsurance 20%. Remember, it's unlimited. It will pay 100% of your coinsurance. It will also pay excess. So if you happen to go to a physician that adds 15% to the bill, that G plan will also pay that. So the one thing that G will not pay for you is the B deductible. Now this year in 2020, that is $198, which means if you have a G plan, the first $198 of anything on the outpatient side, anything uh, billed to you, you'll pay the first $198. That could be a couple doctor visits, it could be maybe a $198 of an MRI, $198 of cataract surgery, but the first $198 uh, for the year is going to be your responsibility. Then after that, you truly have a full coverage plan. All right, and so that is the way the G plan is going to work. Now let's compare that to the N plan. So we saw that the G plan paid five of the six gaps. Now, if we decide to buy an N plan, it's only going to cover four of the six gaps. So the N plan covers four of the six gaps. Now, the N and the G truly are identical on the hospital side. The N plan will pay your deductible. It will pay your daily co-pays if you have extended hospital stays. It will also give you a whole nother year in the hospital at no cost to you. It also will pay your $176 co-pays if you're in the skilled nursing facility more than 20 days. So truly on this side of Medicare, A, the G and the N are identical. Here's where it's gonna differ though. The N plan will pay your 20% coinsurance, which is again, totally unlimited in original Medicare, but the N will cover that full amount of 20% but the end plan will not pay your B deductible, so this will be out of your pocket, and the end plan is not going to pay excess charges whenever that occurs. So again, this is really a minor amount. Once a year, you're gonna to have to pay the $198, that first $198 that comes to the B services. Now this right here on the excess charge, now the probability of that today, they tell us right now that about one out of 10 doctors are going to do this, nine out of 10 do not. However, that certainly can change, but if you ever go to a doctor, for instance, all the docs at Mayo Clinic do this and other uh, specialties as well, but the point is that 15%, if it ever occurs, you're going to have to pay that. So again, the end plan is gonna pay four of the six gaps, where G is gonna pay five of the six gaps. In addition uh, to uh, you being responsible for the B deductible as well as excess charges when they occur, end plan also notice has $20 doctor uh, visit copays as well as a $50 copay anytime you would go to the emergency room. And so any kind of physician you'd see, a primary care doctor, a specialist, if you went in for therapy, but every time you would see a doctor, you're gonna be responsible for $20 copay and the ER of course $50. So that's in addition to you being responsible for those two gaps on the B side. All right, so let me just talk now about the differences uh, as well. Number one, there will definitely be a premium difference. You're gonna see that the end plan is gonna be a little bit Bit lower. Why? Because you took on a little bit more of the risk and that typically in most markets throughout the country is going to be about a $20 less premium on the in plan versus the G plan. All right, so you're going to save about $240. And in regards to that, you're going to have to evaluate, is it worth that $240 a year in savings for you to take on the risk of excess? Remember, right now, one out of 10 doctors uh, will charge excess, but over time that could grow. And most of you doing this today have a life expectancy somewhere between 85 to 90 years old. So you're going to be on Medicare probably a good 20, 25 years, maybe longer. And so we could begin to see more and more doctors charging excess. And if you take an in-plan, you will always be responsible for the excess charges. Again, you're going to have to evaluate that to see if that $240 a year is worth it. Plus, uh, you don't know what your health is going to be in the future. So every time you see a doctor, you've got that copay, of course, uh, that you'll be responsible for as well. So you have to decide whether that 240 is worth it or not. And then lastly, another risk that you have, if you decide, yeah, I think I'm going to go with the in-plan because I want to say that $240 $240 a year, you also have to realize that you have the risk of uh, switching, meaning there may come a point in time when you can't switch. So many people think when we have the open enrollment, they can just very freely switch from G to N or N to G and they can just move around. That's not the case because folks, what happens is once you start your Medicare B, what you have, I'm saying you've retired, you've taken Medicare B, you have six months from your Medicare B date. Let's say your Medicare B date is July. Watch what happens. July, August, September, October, November, December. That's my six months if I started my Medicare July 1, all the way to the end of the year. But notice what happens. 
January 1 of that following year, now my six months is up. And any time I'd ever want to switch a plan in most states, if I want to move from an N to a G, now you're going to have to medically qualify. So you do run the risk that if your health were to change and you're on that N plan longer than six months, that you may have to stay on that plan, therefore being responsible for the B deductible, the excess charges, as well as co-pays to the doctor and ER for the rest of your life. And again, that you may be comfortable taking on that amount of risk, but that really ultimately is the difference between the G and the N. How much risk do you want to take um, in regards to your Medicare? And if you can save some money here, is it worth that amount of risk? And again, there is no right or wrong decision in that. We're all different. You've got to decide. But those are the difference between the G and the N plan.